Firstly, congratulations. Uh, what an extraordinary achievement. Um, has it sunk in yet? Do you still find yourself daydreaming about being out there on the ice? Uh, yeah, I mean, I've been back a few days, mm. like, you know, but yeah, just uh, hugely sort of, you know, relieved that, that I was able to successfully complete the journey. I was, uh, I was under no illusions before I started, you know, that actually my chances of success, you know, were, were by no means guaranteed. And so, yeah, it was incredible that... Uh, I was able to uh, to make it right the way across. Just it, talk us through. Sorry, Kate. Just talk yeah. us through the statistics of what you did. How far you went. How isolated you were. What you had to take with you. Yeah. So we got dropped off um, in early November uh, on the edge line uh, on the uh, edge of the uh, the continent. Uh, and basically, the idea was to ski um, 925 miles uh, right the way across the continent. So the South Pole was about halfway for me. Right. Uh, it was an uphill uh, for most of the journey. So uh, the poles at night just below 9,000 feet. Uh, so it was an uphill slog all the way to the South Pole uh, and then get right the way across to the Ross Ice Shelf on the far side. Uh, and so, yeah, set off with 65 days of food and equipment, uh, totaling, yeah, about 130 kilograms. So I just found, yeah, listening to uh, audio books, you know, was like, yeah, really sort of comforting, even if I wasn't particularly paying attention to what was being said, just having a human voice in my ears and it kind of drowned out the sort of wind, uh, wind what noise books, a bit. What books were they? Uh, I had quite a few uh, autobiographies of Winston Churchill, actually, and ah. one of them was written and narrated by uh, Boris Johnson, which was quite... <laughs> <laughs> that would make it a bit faster. <laughs> yeah. He'd yeah. love the idea yeah. that you helped him succeed, yeah. I imagine, uh, Boris Johnson. But somewhere. you were on your own as well. I mean, this is this yeah. is one of the key things. A very good friend of you, yours, as we just heard from mm. Tom, yeah. Henry Worsley, sadly died doing this exact challenge. Yes. Uh, just 30 yeah. miles from the end. So mm. it's a 900 and something mile challenge and he died that close to the end. Yeah. Um, so that must have been playing. His memory must have been playing, but also the fact that he was your mentor in these things and he didn't make it. Yeah, yeah. We'd served together in the, in the army and uh, my very first journey uh, to the South Pole was with Henry back in 2011. Uh, and yeah, it completely inspired me. He was a huge sort of fan of, you know, uh, polar history and the early polar pioneers and it hugely inspired me doing that journey with Henry and uh, hence why uh, I keep going back down there now. And, uh, so even though he lost his life and you're a father of three and you've got a lovely family and, and, and stuff, you still felt driven to try and complete what he sadly and tragically failed trying. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I think it made me all the more, you know, determined ever since mm -hmm. that incident. It had been in the back of my mind, you know, that I'd like to go down and, uh, yeah, attempt this, this solo journey. And so how crushing was it that having got your head into the right place to do it and trained for a number of months to be ready to do it, yeah. that a matter of days before you found out someone else was attempting it 16 years younger? Yeah, yeah. A professional athlete as well. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I didn't, I said, like, like it said, you know, I didn't actually know about Colin and his attempt, you know, literally a few days before I left the UK uh, to head down. So initially I was a little bit frustrated, mm. but then we, we met in Chile, uh, the sort of launch pad before you go in, uh, had a bit of time together, but we got on brilliantly, you know, obviously both very sort of like minded. And, uh, and to be honest, you know, we both privately thought that actually the chances of both of us successfully completing a journey that no one had ever done before was pretty slim. Uh, and we, we weren't really actually directly racing each other, we we're both just focused on our own experience. Mm and making sure you know we completed and, and you uh, could occasionally see him in the distance yeah so we got dropped off so we're both on the same ski plane together uh, they flew us out together uh, they landed uh, dropped Colin jumped out first and the plane taxied along for a mile on the ground and then dropped me off parallel to him so for the first day we we're a mile apart skiing yeah. alongside each other and looking over each other and checking each other out and then the first week I sort of pulled ahead uh, then after a week he then caught me up and we sort of camped you know a few feet apart for the night and then the following day seven, we were side by side again for a day, you know, sort of checking each other out. And then he pulled ahead. And, and look, oh. is that is that because having done endurance events, but not races, having someone in, alongside you who's on your side is great. But having someone alongside you who, you know, to all intents and purposes, as you say, you weren't racing. But that yeah. must have been mentally he's getting ahead of me. I've got to try and stay up with him. Was, was that did that add to it? Yeah, I mean, it, it was a difficult enough journey as it mm. was. And to how, then be actually racing someone, it added pressure. And uh, mm. so I deliberately tried to blank out, you know, once we'd, so after about a week, you know, we didn't see each other much at all then. And I deliberately tried to sort of, you know, or ignore the fact that he was there. And, I and thought, focus on survival. Yeah. Because it yeah. was very close and not so... Look, he did beat you in He did, the end, he did, he? yeah. But no, it doesn't take did. anything yeah. away from what you did. Just literally the physicality of it. We've got what I would call a sledge here <laughs> in the studio. Should we just go over? You call it, it, what's it called, Louis? Uh, called pulp. A, a pulp. It's yeah. a pulp. Come, on Come with us, yeah. Louis, because you're the expert. So this is your actual one that you took? Uh, no, so this is one of my training ones. Oh, your training one. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But it's got the weight on it. You would have it's got the exact same weight. I mean, it's, carry... ident it's virtually identical to the one I took, and it's got the same amount of weight that I started with. And you had to have everything for 56 days. So, so if you come around here. Where? Where do I pull from? Yeah, that's the front end there. Okay. I have a harness on and. 
put your back out. Yeah, I can't actually... <laughs> I mean, I've got heels on. I'm assuming you didn't, Louis. Uh, but I can't, <laughs> no. I, ca I can't actually move that bit. Could you... If someone, could, if someone could play a little Boris Johnson on a loop, that oh, might yeah, drive us forward. Oh, yeah, hang on, that might help me. Let's I might help. Shall, I, shall I give you a no, hand no. and see if we can move Come between on. the three of us? So. There we go. Oh, oh, there we go. So that is unbelievable. So we filled that with potatoes. I mean, obviously, you've got the fact that you're sliding on snow and ice, so yeah. you get a bit, a bit of momentum. But it was uphill. Yeah, it, it was. It was a gradual climb from sea level, say, up to... I went to, I think my final altitude is about 9,700 feet, you know. And it was actually... I did the journey the wrong way around because I was going uphill for about <laughs> 55 days. And it was only yeah. the last three or four days going down the Leverett Glacier. I actually went downhill. So, uh, I yeah, I should have gone the other way around. And to pack for that amount of time, it means you're very tidy. Did you roll your underwear, can I just ask you? It didn't because I only had one set of underwear. Took one... Pair of pants. I did the whole thing in one pair of pants. That's 56 got to chafe. That's got to chafe after a while. I'm thinking, I imagine but well that done was a weight you. issue. You didn't it, want to take was, anything yeah. excess. I mean, where, where I was literally trying to save grams. I was cutting labels out of clothing. You know, I um, I, I, I took bit. like you know enough toothpaste to clean my teeth once every three or four days. Wow. Oh. Just to try well, you're on your own, so that wasn't so much an issue. Exactly. Now, did you keep the pants, or did they manage to walk home on their own? Uh, yeah, no, there was a ceremonial <laughs> burning of them yeah. got, <laughs> they when I got, got back to Chile, like you know. It's an extraordinary achievement. We've got to shake your hand. It's Congratulations, Lou. We're very amazing. proud that you managed to do it. There's only yeah. two people in the world. And the only Brit to have achieved very, that. Very, very yeah. So amazing. congratulations to you. And, 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 and keeping that memory of Henry alive is, is really important as well. Yeah. Imagine your family were glad to get you home, weren't they? Uh, yeah, very relieved that I'd successfully managed to uh, yeah, get Plans across, for so. anything coming up next? Uh, I dared, and, you know, with my wife who's probably watching this, so, uh, <laughs> having only been home a few days, I dared actually... Uh, yeah, discuss, you won't leave but, the house for a yeah, while, probably, yeah, if she has yeah. anything to do with it. <laughs>